My dad said to me, like, money isn't everything, but not having it creates a lot of problems. And, like, that stuck with me early on, so I knew that I needed to create a path for myself mm -hmm. that I could be successful financially. I went to med school. I absolutely hated it. Being the eldest in my family, it was, like, the path. And I finished one year of med school, and I dropped out. I took on a life of sales, and I worked for several different companies, and that's kind of what took me down the path of marketing, because having worked for different companies, I saw, like, the company that was the most successful was the one that had the strongest marketing engine. It was kind of on that journey that I realized that if I can figure out how to sustainably and cost-effectively create opportunities, I can create a huge opportunity for myself. It was on that path that I eventually met Arthur, who's, who's now my business partner, and CEO of, of Momentum. Momentum was a small five, six person shop, right? Art was actually, he's the CEO. They had done $4 million of the previous year in, in revenue. And that month I said, I said, I'll bet you $40,000 that I'll put up a million dollars this month. And that month I went out and I put up 33 sales for wow. $1.01 million. Once you see success, once you taste success, it's kind of addictive, right? That dopamine rush. You can't go high. back, man. You can't go back. The beautiful thing about sales is that sales finds a way, right? Like it's, you can figure out how to sell anything if you do it the right way. And people are not going to stop wanting things. There's nothing like being home. Just shot a banger, another banger. There's bangers after bangers. The shit doesn't stop. So make sure you don't miss that episode. Shout out to Ringba. Ringba's doing big things in paper call. We're going to blow up paper call with Ringba. We got the paper call revolution book, which is changing people's lives. Providing tons of value for the community. Make sure you're reading the book. Shout out to the Affia Awards, my man Darren Black. New York City, right across the river. LFG show is nominated for best podcast of the year. Fucking pumped up. We've only been doing this a few months, but the love that we're getting in our DMs when I travel all around the world, around the country, there's nothing but pure love out there. It makes me feel good. Give me that warm and fuzzy feeling. If you like what you're seeing, you get a lot of value out of this, make sure you like, you comment, you subscribe. We got a lot more fantastic stuff coming along the pipeline. The stuff that'll move the needle for you like it has for me. So get your fucking seatbelt buckled. We're going to bring the fucking heat and let's fucking go, baby. Yo, we're in Jersey in the Gold Coast, best part of Jersey. I'm super excited about this episode. I've got someone who I've become close with the last, man, I've known you since like 2016, I think. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's crazy. Uh, and um, man, there's so much to talk about on this show. I'm here with Alex Sheik. He's a chief revenue officer for, for Momentum Solar, also an owner of Momentum Solar. If you don't know, Momentum Solar is one of the top, top I'd say top five residential solar companies in yeah, the nation, right? Yeah, privately held, yep. Top, top, top five yeah, privately top five. held. They've been doing big fucking things, man, for a long time. And something interesting, you're you're like the first big client I had in solar. I had smaller clients before you guys, but started selling you leads in 2016. Yeah. And we're still doing business together fucking eight, nine years later, which is did, very, very did rare. Did some consulting work in the call center, remember? Yeah. For a couple, for like a month or two yeah. months, right? Yeah, that, absolutely. Yeah, that's true, man. So, well, yo, it's it's a real honor, pleasure to have you on the show. Really appreciate making the Sweet. time. Man. Yeah. He's a busy guy. <laughs> it's tough to get him tied the fuck down. He's on phone calls all day. And guys, you guys are... There's so much to pack in here. I don't even know where to begin, man. I guess where I begin, man, just tell, can you tell people about your background, man, where, where you started? I know you got a very unique background. I mean, you, well, you, first, yeah. I love GTV, baby. Let's go, man. I'm excited for what you're doing here, Dave. Yeah. I've seen, I've seen you on the podcast and just like, you're, you're at events. You're, you're everywhere <laughs> where you need to be. Like, yeah. you know, when it comes to, to marketing, lead generation, solar, all types of sales, all different verticals. So I see what you're doing, man. So it's uh, it's a pleasure to be on the show, and uh, we're gonna have some fun. Dude, it's gonna be amazing. I can't yep. wait. So, uh, what was your question? So, of course, <laughs> tell me about your, your, how you got started. Because I know, that from my understanding, you weren't originally you, you your, your family. They wanted you to be a doctor, right? Or they wanted you to go to medical school, and then you chose an alternate route. You chose to get become an entrepreneur, which I think everyone's got that fork in the road, right? And it's obviously worked out for you. So I'd, I'd like to talk more about that and your whole, you know, what got you here. Yes, uh, great question. So. I actually did. I went to med school, mm. and I absolutely hated it. I went. I finished about a year. Of and it. you're in Pakistani background, right? Yeah, Pakistani and that's background. What I, I think in my that, parents. Yeah. So my dad's a doctor. My yeah. brother's a doctor. My sister's a dentist. Mm. All my cousins are doctors. That, you know, kind of just Pakistani or Asian background. You know, you come, you come to America, right there, and and they're like, hey, become a doctor, an engineer, or a lawyer. That's success like, they to them. know that's they equate that to success. So yeah. being the eldest in my family. That was like 
it was like the path. There wasn't like, hey, what do you want to be, son, when you grow up? And I'm like an astronaut. Like, no, it was like, <laughs> you're going to become a doctor, yeah. <laughs> and that's how you're going to make money. <laughs> so, yeah. um, so I went to med school. And I absolutely hated it. Like, I was dissecting. I can't picture you in med school, bro. Dude, it was the worst thing ever. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm like, super outgoing and, yeah. like, whatever. Like, I'm good with memorizing. So I, I did all right, but, like, I'm dissecting cadavers. And I'm like, this is fucking disgusting. Can I curse on this thing? No, curse oh, all day right, long. Right, so let's, let's fucking go I'm, show, bro. Right. Fucking dr- I'm like, this is disgusting. Yeah. I was like, because they want you, like, cut open, like, a muscle, pin a muscle, pin veins. Or, and, like, the smell of formaldehyde. And I and I finished one year of med school and I dropped out and I came back and I was like I'm not doing this I was like I was like I'll find another way to make money but this is it and my parents like my dad especially he didn't talk to me for like a year wow like he was he was really upset about it um, my mom you know moms are softer <laughs> like, you yeah. know at least in my family so she um you know she got over after like a month or and I was just like I told them like look I'll find other ways to make money there's people out here making money like i and they you know my parents were worried about me because even as a kid growing up i loved money i used to iron my dollar bills when wow. i used to get my allowance i used to like iron my money i liked it i liked the crispy how old were you at that time <laughs> i'm talking like seven eight damn nine. that's crazy like, or maybe 10 like whatever yeah. like i was i was like it was a long you know talking about, i just so i always i always had a passion uh for money loved money so it was something that you know m- my dad said to me like you know he's like it, you know Money isn't everything, but but it can solve a lot of problems, yeah. right? And so you don't, or or I think what he said was money isn't everything, but not having it creates a lot of problems. I'm sorry, mm-hmm. that's what he said, right? He's like not having it creates a lot of problems, and like that stuck with me early on. So I knew that I needed to, I needed to really create a, a, a path for myself that mm-hmm. that I could, you know, be successful in financially. Um, so I I kind of came left med school. I took on a life of sales, like I did. I did, and I've sold everything. Like, I'm dating myself, but I've mm. sold batteries at Radio Shack. Wow. <laughs> um, Damn. But everything. Like, I've, I I did B2B, B2C, Yellow Page. I did, I, I worked for Section Section Amaria, which is Yellow Pages in Spanish, uh. and I sold Yellow Page advertising in the Bronx. In Latin, Spanish. In Spanish. Wow. To Spanish, you know, people. That's a real sales <laughs> shit right there. Wow. <laughs> and that's how I figured what an abogado is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Huge. Uh, so, but, you know, every, like, you know, cell phones, AT&T, I did it B, B2C, B2B, um, and then got into, like, a, the world of, like, home improvement, like, window window sales was mm-hmm. my kind of uh, step in, foray into it. And I did that and then eventually did, like, in-home sales or what I call kitchen table sales mm-hmm. for, oh, like, seven, eight years. Like, I did windows, roofing, siding. Attic insulation, gutters, e shield, which is like a type of attic insulation, um, energy audits. So I did every kind of uh, home improvement, and I worked for several different companies. And that's kind of what took me down the path of of marketing because I I saw you know, having worked for different companies, I saw like owners of different caliber and integrity products that were better or worse, and the company that was the most successful. Um, was the one that had the strongest marketing engine. Yep. I mean, they knew how to generate leads, and and I and it was kind of on that journey that I realized that if I can, if I can figure out how to sustainably uh, and cost effectively uh, generate leads or, or or create opportunities, like I can make a huge oppor- I can create a huge opportunity for myself in that. And so that's when I opened up my a small like marketing company. It was me. I hired my first door knocker on like Craigslist, mm. right? And um, hired my second door knocker and just had a you know good run i was i partnered with a roofing company at the mm-hmm. time and that i was also working for and that owner gave me a shot um he, you know he loved me we had a great and relationship that's here in jersey I mean, that was that was in jersey out of pensacola okay. actually wow um near philly that area exactly near philly <laughs> and um he gave me a shot and said you know what alex like if you want to start your own marketing thing just you know yeah. do it i'll sell me the contracts right so that's where I, I kind of learned what I, I learned a little bit of the business. I also learned what not to do, I think, right? Because mm-hmm. it was on that path that I eventually met Arthur, uh, who's, who's now my business partner and CEO of, of Momentum. And he, you know, when I, when I met Arthur, I was like, listen, I've got this huge marketing engine. I can absolutely crush this for you. I had a little bit of experience with solar only because one of the companies I'd worked for had sold initially, like this mm-hmm. is, 
back in the day, early solar, when there was, you know, anyone yeah. that knows solar, they were selling like 750 PPW. And right now, what's the average now? Like yeah. half of that, right? At yeah, least it's, more it's yeah. a little, a little yeah. bit more than half of that, but yeah. in that range. Um, and yeah, it was 750 PPW cash, so it is that's half of that. That's crazy. Yeah, man. yeah, that's wow. right, because there weren't really good financial so, products the, for so it. So everyone here understands that. That means like if the average system, that. Shit, people were paying like 70 grand out of pocket, yeah, right? Yeah, Where, grand, Versus like 30 grand yeah, now. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah, 70 grand out of pocket yeah. versus 30 grand now cash. Damn. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> you know, so I had a little bit of experience. So I'm I'm here selling selling Arthur on like I've got, you know, marketing team. I'll blow your company up. And he's like, listen, we'll see. And I started to do some small business with with, with Art. We had a, I had a small construction company as well. At the time, I was hustling. I was doing yeah. a lot of different things. So I installed a couple of roofs for him for his solar customers that needed a roof. And we developed a relationship. And it was in 2015 that I um, I landed a contract with, with Art to, to do sales and marketing for Momentum, uh, April of 2015. And, and at that time, I actually didn't even, um, I didn't even quit really what I had going on, I was like, all right, let me just see, let me take on this. Now, even though I was telling Art that I had this huge company, it was a company of yeah. one plus two cameras. But you got huge results. <laughs> yeah. They're saying sales act as if you <laughs> acted as if and yes. it fucking became reality. Yes, yes, yeah. 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 So, yeah. Um, you know, that first month I went out, I remember, and, and I knocked on the doors myself. That was one of the lessons I learned. You can't lead, you can't lead from a desk. You can't build from yeah. behind a desk, right? You have to get your hands dirty. You got to roll your sleeves up. So, and that was, that was why, like, with the roofing company, it didn't really blow up. So this time around, with, with my second kind of contract, I decided, I was my third contract, I decided, you know what, let me, let me go on knock the doors. Let me figure out the pitch. Let me figure out the script. Let me understand, really, you know, the trials and tribulation of doing the position itself. So I went out and knocked on doors, and that first month, I, I did six sales, and I kind of got, came, came to an impasse because I was late to everything like i'm juggling the construction business right I've, i'm still working for the other company i've got a contract with him i'm trying to run i'm trying to create solar sales here for art and and i was just juggling too many things and i was just i'm like i'm never really going to be successful unless I, I i buckle down and focus on on something so it was then it was it was the end of april in in 2015 that i chose i, I shut down my co uh, construction company i left that marketing contract it must been hard Scary, yeah, right? yeah. It, it was because I was making, you know, I wasn't making great money, but I was just like touching six figures. So mm -hmm. like I, I was basically abandoning all of that, right, mm -hmm. to, to, you know, to start this. I didn't, you know, I, I still remember I had a 1998 Mitsubishi Gallant that I bought for like 300 bucks, <laughs> right? I've always been bad with money. So it's, you know, even even with 100 grand, I just spent so much of it. Like it was, it was like I was broke. Like I didn't. I didn't feel like I, you know, some people would say 100 grand. Wow, that's a lot. Like it's nothing to well, me. Especially here in Jersey. Yeah, yeah here in fucking... Jersey, and you've never been out to eat. Well, you've been yeah, I've been out to eat. You've been out to eat with, you. been out to eat with mean, me. So actually, know. he's a very exuberant person, as you can, <laughs> yeah. if you can't tell. Yeah. Wow, we should cut some of those videos we have yeah. with you inside. He yeah. goes all out. <laughs> yeah. So like, yeah. I'm terrible with money. So it wasn't the 100 grand wasn't doing anything for me. Um, and so I, I quit all that. I, I shut down the construction company. I left that marketers, I left the two marketers with uh, the owner of that the roofing company. And I was like, you know, I'm just going to, I'm just going to do this. Right. Yeah. So that second month, right in May, I went out and I'm knocking doors. I'm trying to hire people now, I'm trying to bring on some of my friends. And that never, that doesn't work out great, uh, honestly, yeah. but try to bring on some friends early on. And all that full month of effort, I only did eight sales. Wow. And I'm like. Oh shit! Like I quit everything for eight, two extra yeah. sales, right? And it was, it was I didn't give up. Though. I'm like, no, there's there's gotta be there's gotta be a you know there's a path here. I I, I knew there was a path here, and that's and that third month I did like 17 sales. Wow. Uh, by myself, and uh, want to hear a funny story actually? Yeah. So, uh, that third month, like July's my birthday month, right? Yeah. So this is now June. I did 17 sales, and and. Momentum had never, you know, Momentum was a small five, six person shop, right? And and uh, Art was actually, he's a, he, you know, he's a CEO now and he was an owner then, but I mean, he was running all the appointments. Like it was, yeah. it was a really small shop. So they hadn't, you know, they had done $4 million the, the previous year mm. um, in, in revenue. And that month I said, I walked into, into Art's office and I said, hey, I'll, I'll bet you that I'll put up a million dollars this month, right? 
And, and how he, many sales? A million dollars. Like it's uh, like 32, 40, 33 30 sales. Yeah. It's like about a 33, yeah. 34 thousand dollar average taking price. Yeah. So it was, it was like, I'll, I, I'll bet you I'll do a million dollars this month. And he ignored me. And he's he's on his phone. He was, you know, he's busy doing whatever. And I just sat there and I, I stared at him and I waited for him. And he looked up. He was like, I'm like, it's a bet, right? Like, I'll be oh, I'm sorry. I forgot. I said, I'll bet you $40,000. Wow. That's what I said, right? Talk about where to get someone's attention. Yeah, I said, <laughs> I'll bet you $40,000. So I'm like just staring at him, waiting for him yeah. to respond. So he finally looks up and I'm like, it's a bet. Like, you could just deduct the $40,000 yeah. from money's owed, right? Like, I'll I'll pay my dues, right? Like, but let's do this bet. And he, like, did some math, and he was just like, I can't do 40000 but I'll bet you twenty grand." Um, and I was like, you're on, right? And that month, I went out, and I put up 33 sales for wow. $1.01 $1 million. Um, and these were all know, organic and net, door knocks. Net of cancellations and everything. Wow. Um, and, yeah, organic door knocks. I had one person knock it with me. I was running four or five appointments a day. I mean, I just had, this is back in the day, I had, like, the carbon copy, the white page, yeah. and the pink, <laughs> and the uh, left the white page with the homeowner, kept the pinks, and I just had a bunch of pink sheets in my car. Yeah. And I'm just going from appointment to appointment, knocking doors between appointments, and 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 did the, num uh, did the number, hit the million dollars in, in July. And um, went took the 20 grand he gave it to me cash you know a man of his word and and i went straight down to atlantic city blew it all on blackjack <laughs> actually <laughs> that weekend <laughs> lost lost the whole 20 grand on blackjack uh, uh but it you know it's when i realized that man this is if you put if you apply yourself there's a beautiful industry at the cusp of explosive growth and it, it just needs it just People aren't educated. They don't know what solar is. They don't know what it's about. If you can just get the word out there in in the right way, like sky's the limit. And not only that, you, well, you, solar right now is back then it was more taboo. There weren't a lot of people doing it. I mean, it's, no. the Jones effect is real. If you see a neighbor do it, then you're more likely to do it, right? But so to do 33 sales, there's people. I was I was uh, somewhere last week with a former client of mine that has a solar company and. I mean, I think they're looking to do eight to 10 sales. And when they, I want them to hear this shit, 33 sales in 2015, <laughs> yeah. that's incredible, man. Yeah. You know, so hats off to you. And yeah. what do you think of, like, how were you able to outproduce everybody? Was it, a, what was the, was it a burning desire? What, what the fuck was it? I mean, it's, I think it's like your whole career prepare you for this. I mean, you were in the right place at the right time. You did, you did, you were inside homes. Yeah. You got it. You had the desire. I think it was a combination of all that, but you, you told me. I mean, I, yeah. for, first of all, you're right. It's, it's, it's a confluence of, of events and experiences yeah. and, and, and different things like, you know, Timing is everything, right? First of all, everything is due to God, right? Yep. But but timing is everything, um, you know. And Arthur, you know, getting his feet wet in this business, trying to understand it, basically selling all referrals at the time and stuff, and and wanting to expand his business. Me coming in with a background of kitchen table sales, I've been I've been doing it for you know at that time almost seven eight years, right? You know. Everything, uh, one call, once it closes, right? Knocked on doors. I'd done a little bit of work in like a BJ's just to understand like set up home shows and stuff, right? So it was like a confluence of experience and timing mm. that that merged or intersected at that, at that one point. And then I pair that with, I hate to lose. Like I hate losing. Dave. like i yeah. even basketball like i'll i'll sweat broken ankle like i'm not losing like i hate to lose dave i i hate to lose more than i love to win um yeah honestly yeah. and that to me was like i i left everything behind like i i i still i i owed my parents and not money like i just like psychologically i owed them a win like I, i'm their eldest son they, they immigrated to this country my dad my dad worked so hard like he he had a degree in, in pharmacology so he was a pharmacist when he came here and then he went and and worked as a pharmacist and put himself through med school in dr in santo domingo in spanish because mm. back then there weren't english classes so he yeah. learned spanish and did med school in spanish wow. right and like and these so these you know these people put everything out there to give their kids a better life and you know like i i owe that to them i owe that to myself right um and so I wasn't, I wasn't going to lose. And I, and I saw the opportunity and I'd seen many opportunities and the, the, the toughest part about an opportunity, right. Is one recognizing it and, and, and then two availing it, right. Doing something with it. Cause so many people get opportunities and they don't do anything with it. But just, yeah. you got to recognize one and then give it all, give it your all. And, and that's what, that's what kind of 
drove me and compelled me. I mean, I work seven days a week, 12, 15, 16 hours a day. But I took naps in my car at the time. Like that was like all, all like time between appointments. All right, I'm like, wow. <laughs> take a nap, take a nap in the car. And, and, uh, and so it, you know, it drove me to just do it. And then once you, once you see success, once you taste, I mean, listen, Dave, I've seen you come a long way. I'm sure you could relate. Yeah, I appreciate like, that. Yeah. One, once, once you see success, once you taste success, it's kind of addictive, right? Yeah. Like that, that dopamine rush. You can't that, go back, man. You can't go back. You just yeah. like, you're not going to, you're not going to go from like a Lexus to a Toyota or a Mercedes to a Lexus, right? Yeah. You're just, you're not going to go, you're not going to go backwards, right? So like, it's it's addictive and you just you want that success and the desire to to continue to taste it and feel it feeds and fuels your your work ethic and your passion your commitment to to what you're doing yeah that, that was amazing a lot of man a lot to pack in there and i think that one of the big things that comes down to your they say this i hear a lot of people say what is your why and i never like i didn't really talk about that you made me think about that now that you had a big why with your parents you you we wanted to make money and I think it all came together for you is what it comes yeah, down to. Yeah, I mean, listen, it was it was being able to to do that. You know, my dad, even even though he was a doctor, he was like he was like very conservative. Yeah. Like, didn't believe in debt. Didn't use credit cards. Like, you know, paid for everything cash. Like old school, very conservative. Like, you know, always dro drove a Toyota Camry. Like, it was a great feeling. I bought my dad his first Mercedes wow. that he ever ever drove in. You it's know? been an amazing feeling. Uh, amazing, amazing. Yeah. Like I like. I could buy myself a hundred cars and it doesn't compare to like that buying my dad that the Mercedes and, yeah. and now every every few years, but yeah. but but still like it doesn't, you know, whatever I buy myself doesn't compare to that feeling. So that's just amazing to be able to do that for your parents that work so hard. Uh and and then I like nice shit myself, man. So like, yeah, for sure. like that's that's always I've been when you shopping, man. Yeah. I know I know what it's yeah. like all over the world too. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I just I like nice yeah. shit. So this is amazing. And you know what when the first time I met you I like being around, I like being around like next level salespeople. Cause I, I, when I say salespeople, I mean, to me, everyone sells. I mean, any next level person in general is a salesperson. It's such, it's such a valuable skill. And then when I, the first time I met you, I, I sensed that I, I was excited. I came away excited. And it's just great to see what's happened, how you've evolved, how, how the company has evolved. And I think a lot of it comes out to, Timing. They say that you know. Sometimes people say, "Oh, you, you got lucky," but you 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 worked hard to put yourself in those positions to be with Arthur and, and recognize like, "Hey, I'm gonna pull my chips here rather than being spread over there." Right? And mm -hmm. that must have been hard and, and, and just busting your ass until you saw it happen. So yep. I think for the audience listening, that's no matter where you're at. If you're someone brand new in sales or you've been doing it for a while, like you have those moments where it's it's not all fucking gravy, right? And we're talking about it in a bit. I mean, when I met you, like you guys are starting to like really, and then you guys went like fucking nuts, right? And it's been the solar coaster, right? And but you guys are still here. So the point is that there's there's a lot to pack in there. I think it's it's, motiva it's motivating as fuck to hear all that stuff. I mean, this is just for because I for the, for your listeners, I'll say this: like I I was I was a fuck up for a good uh, <laughs> portion of my life too. Like I I ruined my credit, uh, you know, got got like 28 points on my life. Like I did all types of 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 stupid things, right? And I didn't even like let's just call it grow up until uh, I was 35 or so. Thir no. I grew up before. I mean, like 30, 32, yeah. right? Like 30, 32. And like, so that it's it's never too late. It's never too late to like, to commit to yourself, right? And that's and that's the thing that I wasn't doing, right? Like I was, I wasn't committing to myself. I was with my friends. I was doing this. I was doing that. I was doing anything but working on myself and committing to kind of having a better path and a better life for myself. So it's never too late to just like say, you know what? Like, like this is it. Like today's the day I'm going to, you know, commit to myself. And it, you know, one thing I tell people is it, it never, like, the thing about commitments is people think that, like, you make a commitment one time, like, today's yeah. the day, right? Or, like, I'm going to start to lose weight or I'm going to save, I'm going to buy a house. No, like, that's not one commitment. Losing weight, I'm just use, I'll yep. use losing weight as an example because that's something I'm working on right now. It, it's, you know, it's not a one-time commitment. I have to commit to losing weight every single day when I wake up in the morning and I want a bagel instead of a, a an avocado, a right? Yeah. I, I, like later on when I'm like, should I order pizza or should I get the fucking salad, right? I'm like, all right, I want, fuck, I want some Krispy Kremes. I'm driving past <laughs> a Krispy Kreme, like, damn. I gotta, you gotta make, you gotta make that decision 20 times a day. Yeah. So like 
that's the that's the thing that people don't realize and that's why like people's health plans don't last and and like because they think you're gonna you're gonna make a decision once and that is gonna yeah. carry you over no like you're making this decision over and over and over and over again 10 times 100 times a day every single day until it's done right and um so that's that's just one thing for the listeners like you you it's never too late and like and you're gonna fail. You're gonna fail over and over. Like I, I I'll just, just. You said like you go through your trials and tribulations. Yeah. Like momentum has gone through so many ups and downs. Even in my weight loss journey, which is this year, I lost 25 pounds, right? And I'm like, all right, I'm crushing it. And I and I let off the gas, right? Started eating whatever, gained 11 pounds <laughs> real quick. And I'm like, you know, working on like getting it back. Like it just, it happens though. Like I'm not upset that I that I did that. It's just, you know. You, it makes you stronger. Like you just, you become more resilient. You learn, right? And and even momentum, man. Like, just it, it, I I saw a meme, right? That or something like a quote. It was like, like people think the path to success is like this, and it's really like it's zigzags. like all it's yeah. all like zigzags yeah. uh, and stuff. And and it is right. It's it's it takes you all over the place. Age data, there's only a few months left of this. A lot of different ways to monetize data. Data is a very broad term. There's a lot more money in it. You already spent the money. Let's just say it costs you $10 for a Medicare lead. You make a million dollars in sales, you really only made a hundred thousand bucks. And you might not get paid by your advertiser. What if I can get an extra 50 cents, dollar, two dollar, three dollar per lead in perpetuity? What does that do to my marketing campaign? What does that do for the stress of the profits of my company? A percentage or two at those kind of numbers are huge. Yep. as moving the needle. So for us, what I love about age data, the, the, the hard part's already been done. Now it's just a revenue left for your company. Um, what would the extra 10, 20, $30,000 a week do for your business? Absolutely. All of our big partners are making hundreds of thousands, if not millions a year with us. They're never gonna have this gold rush again. Yeah, and then, man, so, and I, I resonate with this a big lot, man. And I think a lot of it, I, I, I saw this front, front, front and center. Mm -hmm what happened there and a lot of my success I mean, tied into your your success you guys and that's how a good business relationship should be everybody should win and you guys grew i grew along with you right is what happened and man it was such an enjoyable thing to see i remember uh back in 2016 i i i, I we met in 2016 and then some reason i was in you had an office in edison i think on nixon road or nixon lane somewhere there yeah, nixon lane. you guys just started the call center we met through adam gugino yeah. a good friend of ours right yep. he started the call center with you guys you were in the garage and i don't know why i was i think i just started selling you guys leads and then and I was like, you got, you should meet, you should meet the guys. That's when I first met Arthur. And you guys just hit 30, I don't know if you hit 30 sales or 100. I think you hit 100 sales. 100 April 26. Sales. April 100, was 100 sales. 100 sales yep. is what it was. And for, and for everyone yeah. listening to this, 100 sales is big and, and sold. <laughs> most, I would say over 90% of companies never get there. Maybe 95% don't get yeah. there. It's yeah. 100 signed contracts. So you, you got 100 sales, which was exciting. And then you guys, I think that was your turning point. After that, you guys were just fucking like a machine. And a lot of it tied, the call center was rocking. The outside sales was rocking. Your guys were buying leads, you were you're calling the leads like white on rice. Everything came together to the point where you guys have done billions with a B, billions in, in revenue in solar, right? Yeah. This isn't no bullshit. We're not yeah. talking about 10, 50, 100 million, still good numbers. Yeah. You're talking about multiple billions in solar. So yes. that's what we're talking about here. Yeah. So people understand the magnitude of this. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, I mean, we, we, I remember that 100, there was, we went on a stretch where um, <clears throat> we broke a record every month for like yeah. almost. 30 months straight. I, I was there for a good stretch. I think yeah. I was there for a good four yeah. to four month stretch yeah. where it was like, psh, yeah. it was Every insane. Every month, whether it was like 20 sales or, you know, or, or 75 sales or 80 to 150 sales better than the previous month. Every month for, for it was almost- 30 is a lucky number for yeah. you, by the way. The yeah. low 30s, man. Yeah. Play that shit in a roulette. Yeah, right? yeah, I do. I play 28, 32, <laughs> 31. So, nice. uh, um, but uh, it's, it's um, every month we broke a record, but it, it wasn't without like, someone's quitting someone's you know someone's you know doing this there's just so many different i i could we could talk for days about like you know the things that you experience as as an owner of a large company i mean like we're you know at our peak where you know we are we were at like 2800 uh, wow. employees i thought it was 2000 we're still i didn't know it was yeah, 2800 yeah, that's crazy yeah, man 2800 uh employees so it's 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 a uh, it's a tall order to make sure that you're doing the right things and and creating a platform that allows those 2,800 employees to engage in the right ways and and to to benefit from it. Right? Yeah, and I want to go back to those. You made me think of so much stuff, but but back in those early days, I consulted for you guys. I think it was uh, Mar April 2017. 
through through August around that. It was like a four or five month stretch. And my, my goal there was to help with the call. So I knew Adam pretty well. You guys are doing really well, but there's still the same process. We put in quality assurance, a bunch of stuff. But to be, and for me, that was really pivotal for me. I moved back from South Carolina. I brought my, my current wife along with me. She came, we came as a team. And bro, I felt so welcome. It felt so good to be back in Jersey. I can kick chairs, fucking, I was like throwing chairs, like rah, rah, rah. Yeah. It was yeah. fun, man. And um, bro, that, that, and you're high energy too. <laughs> yeah. It was just such a great uh, experience. It reminded me of like a couple other experiences I had. And I think that, when you see that shit, it becomes your normal. You know, I when I when I if I'm not part of something that's moving in the right direction, I feel like what the fuck am I doing? So like being there during that time was amazing. I think when I came on board, you guys were doing 400 sales a month. Uh, by the time I was out of there, it was like 800, 900 sales a month, and I think you guys got past a couple thousand. I mean, yeah. these are stupid numbers, man. Yeah, Big yeah. fucking numbers per month. Yes. Yeah. 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 I mean, uh, just like last year, we averaged about tw just under 2,700 sales a month. Man, those are big numbers. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it was it was fun. Like growing a business can be a lot of fun, especially when you're winning. Yeah. I just you reminded me of just some of the stories. I remember you. Um, I still got videos on the phone. I'll show. I'll show you yeah, send afterwards. Them, yeah. <laughs> yeah, where like everyone's just like you know we used to. Uh, if we were on the cusp of like hitting a record, right? And 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 for that long stretch, most months we were. And this is pre-COVID, so like the call center, everybody was still in the building, right? And it, it would usually be like that day we were start to just tick off the sales. All right, 22 sales, you know, like 22 sales left to gold, 21 sales left yeah. to gold. And I'd have 100 bottles of champagne carted in. I had like great relationship with like liquor store owners, 100 bottles of champagne carted in. And we would all pop champagnes. I mean, every end of the, on the first of every month, I replaced probably like 20 keyboards because they were just sticky. Five, I fucked a couple up myself, yeah. <laughs> like five, ten monitors. Right? Like it was yeah. it was such an epic and like people took videos of this and they just the 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 employees, myself included, right? We loved, we loved that energy, that environment, right? Where you're just you're celebrating this win. It's like you're you're taking toward goal. Like managers are contributing. They're on like, hey, I got another one. Like they're helping yeah. on TO all calls. All hands on deck, man. Yeah, all hands on deck. Yeah. Like they're helping with TO calls. Like I ever got a rep in the house. Or sometimes like there's a few times where end of the month, I know one's there to run the appointment. I'm going on like, all right, I'll take this appointment. Yeah. I'll go run it, come back, sell it, sell it, come back. Right. All right, that's one less appointment. It was it was was just such a such an experience like it was just you know covid killed a lot of stuff like that right because like everyone was like you know we we went remote with our call center yeah. uh and things but how did was, you adjust how did you feel like what during that period you, you seem I, i'm like a face-to-face -face person i mean <clears throat> yeah you know covid was scary for that right because it's like first of all forget even like we're face-to-face -face people like uh, our business is face to face, right? Yeah, we're coming you to your to house. house yeah. We're 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 selling you at your kitchen table. We're installing. We're inside. We're in your attic. We're looking at your service panel. I mean, the whole the whole uh, experience from end to end. Most of it is is uh, is face to face. So COVID was a scary time because we didn't know, uh, you know, how people would react. And in the beginning, everyone was scared, right? Like I think that was one thing that just the the not knowing had a lot of people. A lot of people scared, especially, and that was, that was like regional, right? Floridians didn't give two shits about yeah. anything, <laughs> yeah. but like your New Yorkers, right? New Yorkers saw a lot, of, uh, saw a lot of death, right? My yeah. dad's a, my dad's a doctor, right? He was working in, uh, in, in NYU in Brooklyn, right? And and there were, you know, yeah, we were, were one of the hardest were, hit areas, man. Yeah, it was yeah, crazy. There, were, there were, I mean, he used to tell me he's like there were refrigerated trucks parked outside with, yeah. with you know, corpses. Not to make this a whole morbid, you know, situation, but. Um, it was it was scary up here. So that was navigating that was a challenge because then taking everyone first we tried to like space people out, but like we were already at capacity in a sixty thousand square foot building. We were elbow to elbow, like mm. you know, not literally, but just about. So there wasn't even like you couldn't even space people out enough in there. So we had to go remote, and it really it, that's where management really comes into play, right? Mm. That's where having training and developing the right management team and having the right software, right? So that you can create visibility into, um, you know, the efforts and the actions of, of the people. Cause you know, call center, like we managed it through, through dials and conversions. And we, it, it forced us to become meticulous in, in 
in understanding metrics and KPIs and living and breathing off of them. It's one thing like you're in the office, you feel the vibe, you look around, everyone's on the phone. So you're like, yeah. all right, everyone's working, right? Or you see someone doing nothing outside on their yeah, seven yeah, second break. Doing, yeah. yeah, right. And yeah. you're like, all right, so it's it's easier to it's easier to manage. But now it really it, it created disciplines in in in, uh, in myself and so it made our, you and, better, you think it made yeah, you tighter, right? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And in our management team that required us to be KPI focused and and drive you know behaviors from from the numbers that we saw yeah yeah it's crazy and i was gonna think i remember that time was scary for everybody i mean i didn't do any lead sales for two weeks and i thought i was i'm like bro i gotta do another job or you know alejandro you gotta you gotta find a job i was trying to figure shit out yeah. and then i got i had a client in the south somewhere that had like 50 vendors and they shut them all down they're like they only put five back on i was one of them and that got me going then you guys got back going again and like all of a sudden, it was like off to the races. You went yeah. from like this to this to like fuck like this, you yeah, know? Yeah. It was such a crazy time, man. But were you nervous? Did you guys think that, oh, fuck, we're done? Or like, yeah, we, I can't I mean, imagine. A, you probably had a couple uh, thousand employees at the time. That must have been, yeah, that's we, crazy. We, we had we had several. You know, uh, I'll, I was nervous enough that I'll say this, right? I had a Bentley being delivered. Bentley Coupe Continental, custom made, right? The black it, one, the, the smoked the, out? The mat, No, the, I, I, I have that one. Okay. The It was a, the Continental GT, right? Okay. Two door custom made. I waited a year for the, I waited a year for this for the coupe, right? And it got delivered two weeks after we had just kind of sent a bunch of people home, furloughed some people, oh, man. right? And I had a deposit on that on that Bentley, and I told the dealership, I was like, guys, I can't in good faith take this car right. I can't take this car on right now like that. Like, I had to furlough a bunch of employees, and I'm going to sit here and pick up a Bentley. Like, that makes mm. no sense. I don't know what, you know, what the business is going to look like in, in a month or, mm. or two months, let alone six months, right? So, like, if you can hold the car for me, great. If you, and they're like, we don't, we don't hold the car. If it sells, it sells, or whatever. I lost my deposit on that car. But, so I was nervous enough to, to not want to take on, you know, yeah. a Bentley at that time, right, as an example. But I knew that. The, the beautiful thing about sales is that sales finds a way, right? Like it's, it's, uh, it, you can figure out how to sell anything if you do it the right way, right? And 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 people are not gonna stop, you know, wanting things. People are not gonna stop buying things. So yeah. I knew that it. The the only the the nervousness is getting through like a cash intensive business like solar, right? And having the responsibility of of at the time twenty five hundred employees. It's like how do I have enough money to pay my employees and ride out the rough time. Yep. That's what you're, you know, that's what we get nervous about. And between Arthur and our third partner, Song, who's our CFO, like I was, I was confident in, 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 in my team, right? Yep. And knowing that they'll, we'll figure out a way, um, you know, to get through this. And, and we did. Uh, Man. So, that is, so it wasn't like what would happen with solar or what would happen with the industry. It's more like, I need to have, we're, you know, we were at that time completely internally capitalized. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, we didn't take any money personally. It was just like, everything goes into the business, keep our employees paid, you know, thank God. We never missed a payroll once ever in the history of the company. That's amazing when you think um, about it. that many, that many know, bodies. Despite, yeah, yeah, despite like all of that. And, and we kept, we just, you know, we kept, we know one thing is that every day that I go to bed, like I know that I have, you know, 2,000 families that that rely on me, you know, to make sure that they're fed. And, and you said so much stuff there. And one thing I want to talk about too is that the 2,000 families, right? It's, if you have 2,000 employees, you're really impacting four or five X, 8,000, 10,000 people, right? One thing I remember when I was there, and that was different probably, I, I, you guys probably changed so much since then, because that was the, 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 the crazy scale up phase, right? You guys su supported so much local business. The rest, you guys were ordering lunch for everybody every day, right? <laughs> yeah. I remember going one time yeah. to, uh, I lived in Metuchen at the time, New Jersey, small town there, and there was a Greek restaurant. And I don't know how the hell, I must have been on the phone with you or Arthur, and the owner knew, he was like, he knew Arthur. He's like, oh, those guys are the best when they come here. Like, yeah. I could see how you guys would, you would infuse, so, you, you would help the local economy out, man, so yeah. much. And it's like, and not just a local economy. You have people. You're in different states. So you're helping out places you've probably never been to, man. Yeah, so I mean, that's the beauty of small business. Like when it's yeah, done that way, that, that you is, make right? such a fucking impact. Yeah, like we we supported uh, for sure. I mean, like just just being in like one of our offices when we when we grew, Matuch, and we did like just a simple thing like ordered food every single day. Like we were, you know, ordering food like the towns. What was the food know? bill like? 
Remember? <laughs> you know, I, I don't. I, I, you know what? That's, I love that because you, you got such an ROI, right? Why the fuck? People are going to take lunch breaks or whatever, right? Yeah. We were, you were humming, man. They're, Each cell is worth eating. Like, it was such like, a we'll, big ROI. We'll feed you. I yeah. mean, there's, there, it, it, had it was have, lunch. It was it, dinner. It was yeah, lunch. Breakfast, dinner, you guys like, didn't yeah, give a fuck. We, we didn't. Yeah. Like, whatever, whatever it is you need, like, keep keep working like you know do you know and and they took their breaks too like you know, we weren't like like we had guys that sometimes they'd go like I, I remember we had this one uh call center person kid made um i i still remember like he uh came to me right one day and we had taken them all out to harrow's pool party right, oh, I remember, that, was a, that was a classic party and uh <laughs> <laughs> um and uh you know, he came to me and he cried. Like this guy was like six foot five. He used yeah. to blow. I, I know you're about, talking yeah, about. Right? Too, yeah, right. And came and he cried. Like my whole shoulder wet. Like cries. Like you changed my life. Like my mother, thanks you. Like she never thought we would have the things that we have today and stuff. And and like a, a, you know, a, a few months later, like he um he came to work with uh, an M6, right? Like yeah. bought an M6 for himself and and used to drive that to work uh, every day. And like and the reason I I thought of him is like. He used to work 12 hours a day, but he'd leave for two hours, right? Yeah. Just to go blow steam, hang out, do whatever he does, probably smoking weed, like whatever, yeah. right? Like whatever he was doing to make, you know, and then he'd come back and work and I didn't, I didn't, you know, like here, we're here. He's a producer. Clothes. Yeah, he's a producer, Producer right? get a different yeah. set of rules yeah. at the end of the day, yeah. <laughs> right, like yeah. here's our hours of operation, right? You, there's legal times yeah. where you could call people. As long as you're dialing within these times, right? Yeah. You want to come and go. Like, so it was a, it was like a really cool uh, you know, it was a really cool environment because he was he was producing, but but it allowed people like we did. We just like we'll feed you. Well, we did contest prizes. You know how many people I've I've sent to Italy and 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 uh, Greece and and Mexico. Forget it. So many times. You know the Caribbean. So many times. Like just TVs, iPads. You know so many so many giveaways because it's like hey, you're working hard. Like let's all have fun. Yeah. Let's all have fun. I love it, and that makes, yeah. you guys won at one point, I think one of the things that, that I like a lot, you guys won best work environment, I don't yes, know, 2021 uh, yeah, or... Yeah, yeah, best best workplace, yeah. Inc, Inc uh, best workplace. And you and yeah. not only Inc, you made you guys made that so many years in a row, I think one year where you are like 50-something or 40, some really crazy yeah, high rank. Yeah, we yeah. made Inc 500 almost like six, or five or six times. And like, guys, that's yeah. hard to do consecutively, because each year the bar yeah, gets higher, yeah, and yeah. I, I did it three years in a row, and like, yeah. it's, it's fucking tough. Yeah, Especially yeah. when you put in those kind yeah, of numbers. Yeah, it was it was at scale. We were still hitting yeah. it, so it was, it was um, you know, it was fun. Yeah. Yeah. So that's great that that, and that's why I know we're focusing a lot on sales because everything is sales at the end of the day. Yeah. And it doesn't matter what your title you are, you got to know how to sell. And the more the, the sooner you get to learn how to sell, the sooner you'll be able to hit your your sales goal. I mean, your goals, your financial goals, and your. At the end, I think also the money is also about freedom. Yeah. You know, and, and I think like you, I, I you always work. I work hard. We're, we're very similar that way. I get here, you're on phone calls, but. You enjoy what you do, man. It's obvious. It's, like you, it's yeah. not working for you, right? Because you know it's, it's like, not. and you're you're, you're mentoring people. I'm hearing you say shit. Like, bro, you remind, remind me of me, and you know we're talking about like you're talking to your your EA, Ms. Mallory. Yeah. You do. You and I, I have my like, man. They they are protecting our time. Yeah. And all yeah. this shit you're saying, like, it's so great to hear this stuff. Yeah. People don't think about that. And to get to the yeah. level you're at, yeah. you got to protect your time. You got to have the right who's yeah. on your team yeah. to help you. You know, yeah. get to those levels. I mean, that's what I'm talking. I was like, "Yeah, it's about you got to protect my time. Like, I'm not. Yeah. You got to move these meetings to this day, yeah. that day, and you know, prioritize kind of what's what's important, what's urgent, right? And what needs me, what can get done by someone else. And that's what a good, uh, you know, administrative assistant does. Absolutely, cool. So the next thing I want to say is um, about with solar, right? Uh, we, we talked about the solar coaster. I, I have a company, Solar Direct Marketing, started in 2016. I was like, yeah, every year, grow, 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 grow. And then we first, we had our first downturn, probably, oh, it's fourth quarter of 2022, first quarter of 2023, around that time. And it hasn't really been the same. We had some ups and downs. A lot of companies going out of business. I think I read last year, 250, 300 companies went out of business. I mean, this some year, giants. Titan, Titan just Titan. went out, yeah. which is crazy, right? Yeah. They were like number one for the longest time. Yeah. So wh why do you, I'd ask your partner, Arthur, this. I want to yeah. get your opinion. Why do you think so many other companies have gone out of business? Why? What has kept you not just surviving, but thriving in this environment? So... The answer is a little, it's similar and, and a little different. I mean, it's been, it's been a tough uh, economic environment for solar companies, especially because, you know, rising interest rates, a lot of homeowners are, are getting solar from, and I don't subscribe to this methodology, but it, it has, it has caused, you know, s issues, right? Where it's like increasing, increasing cost of capital has made it challenging for solar companies, made it challenging for reps to be able to go out there and sell 
uh, higher interest rates. And these are reps that are, you know, focused on not the long-term savings for solar, not the long-term benefits of solar, but more of the short-term, hey, I can get it to you at this price today. And, and that's why I think they were affected uh, more by it. The, the other thing is there were, there were just some, you know, large companies that defaulted, right? Like, um, you know, uh, it was called Power Home Solar, which changed yeah. their name to Pink Energy. The Carolinas, yeah. Right? Um, and they defaulted on Sunlight, like a huge, huge dollar amount, which left Sunlight holding holding the bag for like tens of millions of dollars. So what it did is it caused like companies like that because solar was, a lot of these smaller companies, you know, thrive off of off of capital advancements, right? So they're, they're getting... 30 to 50 percent advances on sold projects, but they're sold but not installed, right? And there's cancellation. Yeah, when, once you sign the contract, once there's you tiers, sign the contract, right? there's yeah. tiers, and once you get permit approved, yeah. right? But that's those are at risk projects still, right? Mm -hmm. These are projects that still have, um, you know, a, a cancellation rate attached to them. But now you're getting advanced all this money. So a lot of the financial partners um, in solar stopped advancing money to companies. What that resulted in is is a, a loss of capital for these organizations. So companies that weren't self-sufficient, that weren't fiscally prudent, that did not have, like, you know, kind of, that did not make the right decisions in the right time, they just buckled under the pressure. Like, uh, you know, Titan said, like, hey, we tried to raise capital um, on multiple occasions and, and were unsuccessful and we just can't afford to keep our doors open. And there's, I've, I've seen several companies, you know, Suntuity, Sungevity, uh, vision, uh, you know, yeah, big the, names. Big these names. are companies that are doing 200 to 500 plus million plus yeah, I mean, a year. Are, I think Titan are, was doing a billion Titan at one point. Titan was doing big, big numbers. Fucking crazy. Yeah. Uh, the other companies were, were smaller than Titan, but still significant yeah. size. Um, and they, you know, they just, they did not have the financial sophistication and, and did not enact austerity measures, you know, quick enough. Like we went, like when this happened, like, you know, you were joking about like, buying food all day long like yeah. we're not right now yeah <laughs> right like we're not buying food all day right we were you know we were uh you know rampant with travel expenses or you know like careless with travel Yo, your parties were insane there, too there, parties crazy were insane, right? pool parties in vegas were fucking fantastic <laughs> oh, yeah. i got some video footage of that <laughs> can't show those on this. <laughs> but Just leave up to your imagination yeah yeah but um you know, we started making smarter decisions, right? We started making, we started becoming uh, more responsible yeah. with our money and just, and just, you know, be becoming more efficient. We we changed our financial products um, and and to, to to provide you know better value for our reps, better value for our homeowners. So we did, we did, we made a lot of changes and and cut costs to the greatest extent. We got rid of our fleet. We had, you know, eight, 900 vehicles. Like, wow, I forgot we, about that. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. We, we we sold we sold uh, the majority of them just to make sure. So we made, you know, decisions like that fast enough, you know, shout out to Song, our CFO. Yeah, I was thinking about it. He, and, he probably was at the and, forefront of all you know, that, right? They, absolutely, because I'm the spender. I'm yeah. not, they're just like, Alex, you can't do this. That's why you, you have to have a good this. team, a good yeah, team of who's that complement yes, each other. Correct, yeah. correct, right? Because otherwise, I, I would have drove us yeah. right to bankruptcy. Yeah. <laughs> right? But you, you're you driving the sales. I, I know how to drive sales. Yeah, but, yes. yeah, I know how to drive sales. I'll bring the money in. How to keep it. Sounds like me, yeah. yeah my I, team, yeah. Yeah, I'll bring the money in. How to keep it, what to do with it. That's that's on, you know, that's on Song. And art plays plays a part in that as well. But just having the right team right and and we complement each other right like i don't i don't think that i'd be here um without art or song and i and i can say it for them as well I, they wouldn't be here without me or the other right like the three of us like we each have a different uh we each have a different role um and in the business and we do our role really well and we work our our, our balls off to to you know get it done and and that that's what works Great answer, and that's that's really, I think you summed it all up. And for me, having worked with you so closely, knowing you guys are so long, I would say one thing too, and it's tied back to the sales aspect. I mean, first of all, first of all, the, going before we go into sales, that complementary leadership team, yeah. right? You got the, the 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 one that's driving sales. That's why you're a CRO, mm -hmm. right? You got the CFO. We came from. He was in Morgan, JP Morgan, right? No, Morgan well, Stanley. He Morgan did. Stanley. He was in the in the renewable energy sector. Yeah. And Morgan Stanley for a decade. He co underwrote. The IPO of Sunrun, he had secured like the Sun Edison Vivint deal. He was one of the bankers behind that deal, yeah. which eventually fell apart. But, but still, he you know so he had a lot of experience in this space in raising capital in in valuations. 
Um, so he he's a, an, an amazing he was an amazing addition to the team. Yeah, West Point uh, too. Yeah, West yeah. Point graduate, yeah. Harvard Business School graduate. Yeah. Incredible. Um, yeah. yeah, so incredible, incredible uh, kind of resume uh, and story. And and man, he fucking works his ass off. Like oh, yeah, he, he's no joke. Like he, you know, he's one person that like his his calendar is like. 30, 40, 50, like 30, 15 minute meeting. Like, boom, 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 yeah, boom, boom, precise, boom, boom, right? Boom. All day, like, I know if I need to get song on the phone, I call him at like 9.58. Yeah, so like, yeah, yeah. if a meeting is ending early, right? Like, yeah. I'll come at 9.58 or, or, or 9.13, <laughs> like, yeah. stuff like that, just to get him uh, get him on the phone. So just uh, really, you know, and, and art, putting all this together, getting the relationships, you know, together, like being the visionary for, you know, where we needed to go and what we needed to do to to get there and stuff, you know, it just it, it all it all came together in a beautiful way. Yeah, it's an amazing team, and I'm I'm very pr proud and fortunate to have been part of that too, because you become like the people you hang around, right? And we spent some good time together, and just seeing that, seeing is believing. You, you know, I grew up in Newark, New Jersey. Liz, I grew up there. Was in at one point, my family had food stamps. We, my mom lost her job, not that she wanted to, but she needed it for a period of time. Yeah. And then when you you, you see that you you don't think I making money is possible but when you see people hustling and doing you're like wow i can fucking do it too and i want to talk next about th this area that you know, we live in i call this oh. the go they call this the gold the coast, coast right? yeah so you know i grew up in, in, in i know you grew up in jersey city i grew up in newark right it was like really like you know blue it was collar tough tough, 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 yeah, tough areas, areas yeah. and i i worked in Englewood cliffs um in 2005 at student loan consolidators that's where i met yeah. adam at, right yeah. and that was a call center that blew up too i mean the owner made crush it over there wow. sold at the right time right right time right place right time and that's where I learned how to sell, be in call centers and that kind of shit. And I would drive past this area. It was nothing like it is now. And like I always, this, this, this city, man, like we're just, you know, growing in Jersey, being the shadow, and you're like, you, you, you always like aspire, right? These buildings just uh -huh. give you some inspiration. So you, I think Arthur moved here. I came here for like a New Year's party yeah. in 2017. You were here in the same yeah. building. Yeah. And then you moved here. And then I went to Soho over there. That's uh, Soho and uh, some fucking spa they got yeah. up there. And my buddy's like, Dave, you got this is your area. You need to live here. Yeah. Like, Bro, you're fucking right. And then like a few months later, I moved here. You moved there, yeah. yeah. And just seeing this fucking city. We used to every... play laser war. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was definitely illegal, man. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, seeing yeah. this fucking city, like right behind us, and well, we would zoom in later on. You got the tallest building, the tallest residential building in the world right there. Yeah, right there. Right? Yeah. Some guy bought the top floor for 150. 50 million, 200 million. That's right. So you see this shit yeah. and it makes you think bigger, right? Yeah. So you feel the same way or like what, what prompted you to move here and the, how does this fucking, it, to me it's leveling up at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah. listen, growing up in Jersey City and yeah. and very much, I mean like this was, it, it was not, like Jersey City had no affluent parts, now it yeah. does, but not in the oh, 80s. Oh, way different. Yeah, yeah, I got robbed like, three fucking times, my <laughs> yeah, car broke in Jersey you could, City. Yeah. You could not leave your bicycle in your front yard in Jersey yeah. City. It would absolutely get stolen. You rode your bike through some blocks, you, you're <laughs> walking home without sneakers most likely. Yeah. So it was a completely different area, but just, you know, growing up in Jersey City, I always, like, being close to New York City, like, everything is there, like, you know, yeah. you know, and it's, it's it's such a beautiful, just, it's such a beautiful city, like, look, I mean, that's artwork right there. Right? It you, is you know, artwork, You look yeah. back there, and, and I remember the first time I came to Art's house, because he had, he had, um, you know, a, an apartment on the third floor uh, in this building, and, and I and I walk and I and I open the door to the building and I looked out at this, and I'm just I was like, jaw like mouth open right like I'm like wow like what a like, what a view right and every time I would come to his house like that did not change like I would open that door and like look out his like his front window, and I'm like wow what a view yeah so it was. And I'm like, I want, I want to live in this building. So I, I, I got an apartment in the building, the, you know, um, and I told the doorman, like I was at a great relationship with everyone that I'm around, yeah, right? No, you're very, so, very generous person, by <laughs> yeah, the way. And I, think, so, and I felt, I think it's paid you back in multiple ways, in, man. In, it's, in, it's great. In, in multiple, yeah. like in multiples, in yeah. multiples, right? Like I, 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 I love doing it, but I, I hundred percent, it's, it's selfishly selfless, selfless, yeah. right? Um, but it, it um. You know, and I said, dude, if like one of the front units ever open up, like you gotta let me know. And uh, and and one day, like he texted me, like, dude, the penthouse just went up for sale, right? And I called the realtor, and I told her, I was like, hey, the penthouse is going up in the market, get it. She said, do you want to take a look at it? I was like, no. I was like, I don't even care what's inside. <laughs> I was yeah. like, just get me the damn penthouse. I wanted. And then she walked me up here, and I saw this view, and. It was like I was just like floored. I was yeah. floored by the view, and every day. I mean, I've I've 
I've had this. I told you I'm just going to start construction on it yeah. uh, now. But like, I've had this unit since it. I I closed on this deal Jan 2020, and every day that I look out here, I'm inspired. There's just there's just that's what motivates me. Like there's yeah. just so much money out there. Like what point one percent point zero 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 one percent of it, and we'd be tens of millions yeah, of dollars, crazy, right? Yeah. Like point one percent of it you know, like yeah. multi-billionaires right like there's just you look out there and you see what's what's possible right the buildings like you know that that have been built the money that's sitting in those Beautiful, man. in yeah. those towers and those condos like this is like it's like being close to it just reminds you every single day of what's possible yeah. i don't have a 110 million dollar condo yet i don't know that i'd want to live in a place without an outdoor space but yeah. <laughs> but but uh, you know uh, I want. I would love to be able to buy a hundred ten million dollar condo, yeah. right? or spend that on a condo, yeah. or on a place, right? And uh, so every day they're getting up. I, I, I suddenly, you know, my wife laughs because I wake up in the morning and she's she's still sleeping, and sometimes like she feels like someone's standing there, so like mm. she wakes up, and I'm just I'm just staring out the window, yeah, in silence. It's like six in the morning, sun's coming up. I'm just like staring out the window because just it, it's peaceful. Yeah, it's peaceful and yeah. it's. It just makes you think bigger. Like no yeah. matter how you had a great month, that's the thing in sales and running a business. I mean, you're only as good as your last sale, yes. right? And you might have a record month, but you got to break that record and it is what it is. And then it just keeps you going. But looking at this shit, like what? Some motherfucker bought that top floor. Why can't I do it? Yeah. It, 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 he just, he reverse engineered something or, yeah. or hit something, right? And, yeah. and listen, regard, what, what, what Soul is going through right now, I think is a sign of consolidation. It's a sign of maturity. And the, 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 the ones that are, have austerity measures in place and know what the fuck they're the doing, they know how to sell, just, they're the ones that are going to survive and they're yeah. the ones that are going to be the, the market leaders. You already are market leaders, but yeah. that's how you get to the it's, next level. It's a cleansing. Yeah. It's, it's getting the noise out of the way. It's going to be the it's going to be the ones that have the right principles, the right business principles, that do the right things for their employees and their customers. Those are going to be the companies that are going to be around and and they'll be able to they'll be able to capitalize. Like I, w I would love to be the, the largest solar company, profitable, but largest solar company in the country yeah. because... I'm 100% sure that we do it, we will do it, we do it better than every everyone else, and we will do the people that deserve to take advantage of these incentives, right, that deserve, right, to get the right experience, like the federal government is giving, not giving out money, but there's an incentive in yeah. place, right, they're, they're supporting or funding it through our tax dollars, they deserve to be able to return, get a return on those tax dollars that they pay out. 100%. And, and I know we'll do it better, I know we'll do the right things for our customers, we stand behind our work. And, and just doing that, I've, I've always said, if you treat your employees right and your customers right, the money comes. Yeah, 100%. That, that's beautiful. And we can go on. I think we're going to have to do a part two for sure, man. Yeah. This. You know, yeah. We got to wrap this up. But there's, sure. so much, there's so much I want to expound upon. Yeah. And I think that another reason you guys have been able to withstand the test of time is that I, I see how you guys treat leads. Yeah. You call the fuck. For me as a lead seller and most of the audience, we, they sell leads or digital marketing. Oh. 90% of clients we sell leads who don't know how to work a fucking lead. You can give them the greatest lead in the world and they're going to oh, fuck it up. They're not going to call right away. Yeah. Everything is about speed, you know, speed to call, call times, cadence, nurturing cycles, bringing it back. Yeah. Like it's all, I mean, we could talk about that. For and that but that's why you guys were a great yeah. partner because you want yeah. a few that know what you're yeah. doing. That's why I would say if I have to bet on someone withstanding the test of time, thriving during this environment, it's you guys because you got the right leadership team, you got the right culture, you got the right speed to lead, you know how to buy media and do this, and you treat your partners right now. I'm an example of that. I've been knowing you guys eight years, and we're still, it's a very rare thing, man, and man, we'll keep this going as long as we can, and I feel like it's not, it, it, this goes beyond solar. We've had conversations like that before. It's not just, business we become like real good friends our yeah, wives know each other we've gone around the world all over yes, with each other yes. you know and that's what that's going to continue and that's the beauty jumped off the top of a yacht in we Greece. jumped off the top of a yacht yeah <laughs> i mean i've gotten nervous i don't yeah. know if i did that shit. I, she did she did i did and i'm not as good of a swimmer so that was like scary she beat arthur her. in the race yeah she beat oh bro that was great i got i got Allie's footage that. super fast in the water bro she's a fish yeah, she's, <laughs> she's amazing fish, yeah well, guys, Alex, pleasure. Yeah. This was amazing. We got to do another. We got to do a round two. And we got to do one. We go out to dinner where you do your whole food review. Oh. He's a big food. He doesn't fuck around. Come eat with me. You'll see it. We'll Come do it. eat we'll with do me. It. Yes. Eat like Sheik on TikTok, <laughs> baby. Let's do it. You need your own show. Like, guys, you can, he is, he's hilarious, man. Yeah. He's like, he's just a great, he's a pleasure to be around. Yeah. It's, it's just fucking great to be, to be friends with you. And yeah. I appreciate you being on the show, man. Yeah, absolutely. My pleasure, man. Dave, LFG TV. Thank you, everybody. Let's go. Let's fucking go.